this video, video number 13 of the T's Math Tips, and we're going to look at an equation with fractions and the distributive property. Way early on in the T's Math Tips series, video number one, right here, we covered some multi-step equations, and two of those equations involved the distributive property. However, we did not have fractions. And then if you look at my free ATIT's math practice test over at www.bcraftmath.com, we had a question on that practice test that had fractions in it. However, this did not have the distributive property. Well, now we're taking those two concepts and we're putting it into one problem. Yes, I have it written down twice because I'm going to show you two different ways of tackling the problem. The first way that we'll do over here is going to be dealing with the fractions. We're going to multiply them, we're going to add them and subtract them and divide them. It's probably the more complicated way, but this is a definite way that you can do it. And then we'll come back for the second example. The second way we'll do it, we'll eliminate fractions and that will make our computations quite a bit easier. So let's start with the first way. Let's distribute this 5 fourths to both of these terms inside of the parentheses. Now when you multiply 5 fourths times 3x, you're really just taking the 5 times the 3, that gives you 15, don't forget your x, and this is going to be over what? Well, this 3 is 3 over 1, so we take 4 times 1, we get 4. So therefore we have 15x over 4, or you may see it written like this, and that is absolutely fine. The x can be written out to the side, it's the exact same thing as what you see right here. And since that is the case, I'm just going to rewrite this that way. So I'll put 15 fourths as my fraction and I'll put an x right beside it. Exact same thing. Now let's take the 5 fourths and multiply it by 2. So 5 times 2, that gives us a positive 10. And again, we have 2 over 1. So 4 times 1, we get 4. Now we can come back in a minute and simplify this to make our lives a little bit easier. Now this is going to be equal to, let's distribute over here, 7 twelfths times 2. 7 times 2 is going to be 14. Again, we have 12 times the understood 1, so we have over 12. And let's put an x out beside it, just like we did back here. And then last but not least, 7 twelfths times this negative 15. Now this is where it gets a little bit crazy because, you know, if you don't have a calculator, 7 times 15, what is that? And that is going to be 105, so we have a negative here. Watch your signs. 7 times a negative 15, I'm going to put subtract 105 over 12 times an understood 1, we get 12. Now we have fractions all over the place. And I want you to remember this because we're going to use this exact same concept over here in a moment. But for now, let's just stick with the fractions. Let's simplify whatever we can. The 15 fourths, let's just leave it alone. The 10 fourths, we can divide those by 2 to get 5 halves. 14 over 12, we can simplify that as well by dividing these both by 2. That gives us 7 over 6. Let's put our x down. And we can actually simplify this one as well. I recommend doing this to prevent big numbers. And uh, 105 over 12, we can divide both of these by 3. 3 will go into both of these numbers. And 105 divided by 3. That will give us 35, and 12 divided by 3 gives us 4. So we have an equation with fractions. Now, what we could do here is we could multiply everything by a common denominator, but I'm just going to stick with the fractions and roll on with it. So we have x's on both sides. Well, to get the x's by itself, we need to either move this over here or take this 15 over 4x and move it over here. It does not matter. Either way we do it, we need to subtract one of them. So let's subtract the 7, 6x. And we're going to do this from both sides. And what happens over here, if we take 7, 6x minus 7, 6x, they cancel out. Over here on this side, we need to get a common denominator to subtract these things. So I'm just going to come over here to the side, and I'm going to take 15 over 4, and I want to subtract 7 over 6. A common denominator. You could use 24, but we can go smaller. 12 is going to be a common denominator. As a matter of fact, it is the least common denominator. And we're really taking 4 times 3 to get the 12, so let's take 15 times 3 to get the 45. 
Now down here at the bottom, six times two gives us 12, seven times two gives us 14. You need to do this to subtract our fractions. So 45 minus 14, that's 31 over 12. So when we bring that over here, we have 31 twelfths, don't forget your x, plus five halves, and this is going to be equal to, bring down what we have left over here, negative 35 over four. Making a little bit more room, and now we have the x on one side, but we have to get rid of these other pieces over here, and it works the same way as a two-step equation. We have two steps left. The first step we want to do here is move this five halves over here, and we're gonna do that by subtracting that five halves from both sides. And what will happen here is the five halves will cancel out over here, and we need to actually subtract these two pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and bring down the 31 twelfths x, since that's all we have left on the left-hand side. And this is gonna be equal to, well, let's see what we got. We can't subtract these until we get a common denominator. So we got a four and a two, a good common denominator to use here. The least common denominator would be four. Eight would be fine, but you're making your numbers bigger than what they need to be. And since I'm not changing that common denominator, it was a four and it still is a four, that 35 or that negative 35 rather does not change. However, down here, we need to multiply the bottom by two to get four. So let's take that five times two, don't forget your signs, we have negative 10 over four. Combining these, negative 35, subtract 10, that's negative 45 over four. Now here's where things get a little bit crazy with this long technique here. We have to get the x by itself, and to get the x by itself, since it's getting multiplied by 31 over 12, we need to divide by 31 over 12. And we're gonna do this on both sides, but if you've seen my videos or you've heard me talk about dividing fractions, there's a way we can turn this into multiplication to actually fix things. And uh, let's do that here. So over here on this side though, 31 twelfths divided by 31 twelfths cancels out. We have X equals, and when we have a fraction divided by a fraction, we can keep the top fraction, change the division to multiplication, and flip this bottom one, keep, change, flip. That's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm gonna keep that top fraction, negative 45 over four, change this division to multiplication, and then finally we're going to flip so we have 12 over 31. Now, I do not wanna multiply 45 times 12, and I don't wanna multiply four times 31 if I don't have to. So a shortcut with multiplying fractions, and I've mentioned this in several videos on multiplying fractions, if we can divide the top and bottom by something where we have some common factors, for example, 12 and four, we can divide both of these by four, right? 12 divided by four, that will give us a three. That makes that a little bit nicer to deal with. And four divided by four gives us one. So yes, this does make it a little bit nicer to work with. We get x equals, if we take negative 45 times three, that will give you negative 135, and our bottom number one times 31 gives us 31. This is our final answer. I know this answer looks rather crazy, so let's go to the calculator and check our work. So let's take that negative 35 over 31, and I'm just gonna plug it into x and see if we get the same thing on this side as we do on this side. I'm just gonna use a calculator real quick. So we had the 5 fourths. That's gonna get multiplied, so I'm gonna put a little parentheses here. Three times, and I already forgot what our answer was, negative 135 over 31. And then we gotta add two to it, so plus two close our parentheses up and we get something funky. Okay, let's see if we get this same number when we plug negative 135 over 31 into this spot right here. So checking that, we have seven twelfths, parentheses, now we have two times that answer, so two times negative 135 over 31, and then finally we're going to subtract 15 from this closing the parentheses up and check it out. We get the exact same funky number 
which means our answer, our solution, negative 135 over 31 is correct. Now, if you made it through all of that, check out this other technique. And I've mentioned this in my free practice test video when I posted solutions to those free practice test questions. And I mentioned earlier, we're gonna come back to this right here. And as a matter of fact, we could do that, but let's take this. I mean, really, to get from here to here to here, we would do essentially the same thing. But I'm gonna to come to this step right here, and I'm gonna write that down over here, and we're gonna do something a little bit different with it. So, if you watched the free practice test video solution on dealing with fractions, a way that I also like to handle these types of equations is to multiply everything through by a common denominator, and that will allow us to eliminate our fractions, but sure, we can still end up with a fraction as our answer. So looking at all of these denominators, we got four, a two, a six, and a four. The first number that all of these denominators will go into is 12. So let's multiply both sides of our equation by 12. Over here, and I'm gonna sneak it in right here on the other side of this equals. Now, yes, I understand it would be the exact same thing here. If you look at this problem, 4, 4, 12, and 12, that common denominator would still be 12, but you know we can use this as well because our numbers are a little bit smaller. We don't have that 105 to worry about. All we have is 35. So with that said, let's distribute the 12, but check out the shortcut. Let's actually take the 12 and divide it by 4 first. And if we do that, 12 divided by 4, that gives you 3. And if we take 3 and multiply it by 15x, we get 45x. So what I'm doing here is I am dividing 12 by 4, and that's always going to give us a whole number since 12 is a common denominator for all of these pieces. And let's continue that process on. So here we go again, same idea. We're gonna take that 12, and instead of us multiplying it by five, sure, that gives you 60, and then 60 divided by two will give you 30. We'll check this out. Take the 12 and divide by two first, which is six times five gives you 30 again. In my opinion, this will help you perform these calculations much faster. Take this for example, 12 times seven, instead of doing that, Take 12 divided by six first, that gives you two times seven X, we get 14 X. Don't need to forget my equals here. And then finally, one more time, let's take the 12, instead of us multiplying by a whopping 35, let's take 12 divided by four first, that gives you three. Now multiply by 35, we get 105. Don't forget your minus there. and check out what we have. We have nice numbers that are not fractions anymore. So from here, let's work on getting the x's on one side. I wanna take away that 14x from both sides, and this will leave us with, after I cancel those out, 45 minus 14 is 31x. That should be sounding a little bit familiar. Bringing down our plus 30 from up here, this is equal to negative 105. So we have to move these two pieces. We have two steps left. Let's move the 30 over first by subtracting it from both sides, canceling them out over here, and bringing down our 31x. This is equal to negative 135 now. Our last step here is to divide both sides by 31 to get the x by itself, and check out what we got. x is equal to negative 135 over 31 which is the exact same answer as what we got down here. And there you have it, two completely different ways of getting the same answer to the same equation. I highly recommend you know, learning this technique here, multiplying everything, multiplying both sides of your equation by a common denominator to eliminate fractions. Feel free to check out that free practice test if you haven't already. And again, you can pick that up over at www.bcraftmath.com with tons, over 80 T's math tutorial videos. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.